Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we're going to discuss the vaccine trials, some of which are now supposed to start in India as well. Of course, Serum Institute is one of the big players, generic vaccine players in the market. And they have also lined up with the Oxford University trials that if it succeeds, then they will also produce the vaccines in India. Satyajit, a very peculiar clearance given by uh, ICMR, your friends in the Indian Council of Medical Research, who seem to have said the vaccine should be ready by 15th of August this year. Now, doesn't it seem absurd that the Indian Council of Medical Research should not know there are three phases of the trials and they are now asking the vaccine manufacturer who had said that they will run the trials uh, phase one, phase two, and phase three trials over 15 months, they should do it in the period of roughly six weeks? The first response that many people had to the letter from the Director General ICMR that you're talking about that was, that came, that emerged as a leak, I think, day before yesterday evening, was is this some sort of a troll or a scam or a joke? Um, because, so I have had people asking me, do I really think that is his signature? And I asked you, did, I, did they make a mistake about the year in the letter? That no, somehow no, no. This person, one person asked that as well. <laughs> um, so it is, it is that extraordinarily peculiar a letter. But in very brief terms, the letter is deeply problematic in two different ways. Firstly, the letter is written to the um, uh, private sector partner developer biotech industry, Bharat Biotech, and to a group of a dozen or so hospitals um, let me not use the term medical institutions, since all of them, I suspect, cannot be dignified with that term. Um, a dozen or so hospitals who are supposed to be participating in the clinical trial of a SARS-CoV-2 COVID-19 vaccine that ICMR and Bharat Biotech are developing together. Oh, I see, but the partner in this. Uh -huh. Oh, that is even more strange. It, I, uh, you know, the, the number of weird things about that letter simply multiply the more carefully you look at the letter. So um, I'm still hoping to wake up and discover that it was some sort of a joke or a mistake and that it wasn't written by the DGICMR at all. Although I suspect that that's not going to turn out to be the case. Um, Can we demand to see his degree? Is that a legitimate demand? The whoever assigned the letter. <laughs> so, um, but, but uh, completely uh, frivolous responses, although they are the most appropriate aside. Um, let me point out that there are two ways in which that letter is worrisome. Two different categories in which that letter is worrisome. One category is this is a letter coming from a senior government um, official. This is not simply the director general of the Indian Council of Medical Research. Um, it is also a full secretary of the government of India in the Ministry of uh, um, Health and Family Welfare, um, the secretary in charge of the Department of Health Research. Um, so this is then effectively a government letter. And basically, this is a government letter that is written to a number of parties, some in the private sector completely, a few in the public sector, basically saying to them that they need to fast track and expedite 
a vaccine clinical trial, which is in regulatory terms an extremely carefully hedged about undertaking. It is hedged about by legal requirements. It, it, is, it is encompassed in regulatory stringency, all of which is for good reason. I mean, normally fast tracking is something others might want, but a regulatory body asking the people to fast track development of a vaccine is actually the reverse of what a regulatory body should be doing. So keep in mind that uh, this is not the regulatory body, technically speaking, because the regulatory body is the uh, CDSCO yes. or, or the Drug Controller General of India or, or DGCI. people in that component of government. Okay. Um, if, if this had been the regulatory body, then the conflicts would have been even more uh, problematic. Because as I said, ICMR is, is a partner developer of the vaccine. Okay. Um, nonetheless, to say that um, is, what does the letter say? Uh, that, that serious views will be taken of failure to expedite the process, uh, to introduce the matter by saying that uh, this matter is being followed at the topmost levels of government or words to that effect. Um, all of this is classical bureaucraties to threaten people. With. So implied in this is a threat that you better do it in six so, weeks or else. So the tenor of the letter is deeply coercive. And to have a senior government functionary not just participate in, but actually initiate such a coercive uh, uh, letter going out to a number of organizations is really does not bode well for the integrity of our regulatory processes as far as biomedical technology development and drug development and vaccine development are concerned. So that's one whole category. And we can talk about all the many facets and dimensions of uh, uh, this uh, difficulty with the tenor of the letter. The other component of that letter, which is worrisome, is of course what everybody has focused on, which is this quite weird deadline in which apparently the Director General of the Indian Council of Medical Research thinks that phase one clinical trials can be initiated by about the 7th of July, since the letter says you should start recruitment no later than the 7th of July. And a phase one, phase two, phase three clinical trial process, including data collection, analysis, evaluation, um, and regulatory consideration of all of the above can be completed in less than six weeks to Why enable a vaccine to be launched on the uh, hallowed occasion of uh, India's, what is it, 73rd Independence Day anniversary. This creates worries, not simply about uh, a coercive government, but about the competence of government. I would go a little further, Satyajit, and say the sanity of the person signing the letter, if he indeed has a degree in sciences and has been reading up the files, which I presume he has been in the position he occupies. So it's a, it's, I'm going to be in this sense, you know, not as, as restrained as you are. Okay. I know there are circuit in which you must intersect with ICMR. So after which this discussion that might not take place in the future. <laughs> but it, this is, and I, we haven't had a response from ICMR after all this has come out. Well, um, uh, I have seen somewhere in media a response by uh, 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 ascribed to an ICMR uh, official named Dr. Sharma, I think who appears to have said something to the effect 
that uh, this is simply encouraging all parties to uh, work as hard and as quickly as possible and that the date is simply an aspirational date and i can imagine that um, containment of the adverse fallout uh, to this letter can best be done by that kind of rubber walling yeah but you know even if it's an aspiration it has to be an aspiration which is achievable yes, that's sir. why i said if it was something which the ministry of health and is officer had written i would have said okay it's aspiration but this is the indian council of medical research so they should know at least better than lay person what this uh, phase 1 phase 2 phase well not simply that if you actually um, look at the trial in date uh, information that is uh, in the public domain this is the trial about which that letter is has been written the trial itself uh, says that it will last for about a year and i think two months or three months 15 months is i think the trial period roughly so the trial is perfectly reasonably initiated the trial does not also say that it's a combined weird phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 trial the trial says it's a phase 1 phase 2 trial so um, there is nothing in the background of this letter to support the extraordinary claims of this letter nothing in the background from the council uh, from bharat biotech from any of the participating institutions to suggest that the uh, weird claim of 15th of august 2020 is on any of their horizons so okay i think we've spent a lot on what could be called hot air of the bureaucratic handling of icmr of a very serious medical technical research issue how should safety trials be conducted for a vaccine and what should the duration both of which are really important issues and troubling a lot of the people worldwide because of course if you could produce a vaccine very quickly that would be of great help but at the same time you don't want to produce something which actually backfires because a wrong vaccine or a bad vaccine would have very adverse repercussions on the total scheme of vaccines itself it would create doubts and as you know there are anti vaxxers all over the world saying vaccines are bad so you are also fighting that in fact one of the uh, uh, one of the statements i think by fauci is that 50% of the us people may not vaccinate themselves because they don't believe in vaccine so the anti vaxxer problem is quite acute so in this climate if you produce a bad vaccine it's really going to uh, rebound on us in more ways than one throwing doubts on the indian capability of producing vaccines manufacturing selling vaccines and of course of the vaccine process itself absolutely as a matter of fact um uh, i would worry quite a bit about this particular vaccine candidate um, as you know i tend to worry pedantically about terms we use and so long as a vaccine is actually not licensed i would much rather that we refer to it carefully as vaccine candidates rather than uh, vaccines and this vaccine candidate is essentially simply the virus um which is where icmr's participation comes in because icmr this is an isolate of the virus a strain of virus that icmr has grown in pune uh, at the national institute of virology from uh, infected indian patients that it, it has isolated it from so um and 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 the vaccine is formulated as grow the vi virus kill the virus and inject the killed virus and this is an old in fact it's the oldest Uh, of the many vaccine technology categories that we've discussed in the recent past um it's not technically perhaps the most um, demanding vac vaccine formulation to make in some ways but in other ways um it has its own um, potential caveats and limitations so for example the 
vaccine candidates for the older SARS, the 20-year-old SARS-CoV-1 uh, disease for which people were making vaccines, or the MERS uh, disease virus, MERS-CoV-1, for which people were making vaccines, in both of those, um, this kind of killed virus vaccine led to uh, some difficulties. So it's not... Elaborate on the difficulties. Oh, yeah. Um, in um, animal studies, while they provided protection against the virus challenge, they did lead to some more mm, inflammation in lung tissues than uh, would be desirable in the, in the vaccinated animals. Now, this is not at all to say that the present killed virus vaccine will be similar. And in fact, um, again, if you remember, uh, the first vaccine that we discussed in these ongoing COVID-19 discussions from Sinovac, the Chinese company, uh, which put out, oh, two months ago now, data on um, rhesus monkey experiments showing that there was some measure of protection. Those data looked at monkey lungs and did not find inflammation. So it's not at all my suggestion that that's what's going to happen here. I'm simply bringing it up as, the ki as an example of the kind of worries that you point to about vaccines and their safety and efficacy related issues that we have all have to be careful about. Any vaccine needs safety and that's why you have phase three trials. That's essentially the part of the phase three trials. To Absolutely. See large and numbers, there is there any adverse reaction in certain sections. And, and, and as we have discussed, here is the paradox in the speed of SARS-CoV-2 COVID-19 vaccine development, which is that the better we control the rate of spread of the pandemic, the slower vaccine development is going to be. Fortunately, the US, Brazil, and India is providing now a sufficient speed of the disease. I would not have used the term fortunately, but... Uh, yes, I, I was being I, sarcastic. I, I, I have to agree with, with that. And as a matter of fact, you will note that that's precisely why um, all the phase three clinical trials that I'm aware of that, are, that have been initiated have been in Brazil. Yes, that's right. If the Chinese one is in Brazil, Chinese don't have patients, clearly. Okay. And, uh, so, uh, the, the Oxford trial is in Brazil. Uh, oh, Oxford trial is also in Brazil. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. So, Why aren't any of them happening in India except uh, this uh, Bharat Biotech one, pro the proposed Bharat Biotech one? Any idea? Oh, I think that... Uh, well, I, honestly, I don't know. Uh, why none of them is happening in India. I think that one possible explanation is that the growth of the epidemic, the spread of the epidemic in India is very heterogeneous. Okay. And because of that, um, there's always going to be difficulty about setting up the trial where the two groups, vaccinated and unvaccinated, are going to be exposed over succeeding time to an equivalent risk of virus exposure. So to that extent, Brazil provides, quote unquote, a better place to trial, to hold trials. That appears affecting to everybody. at least one possibility. I'm, I'm guessing that may be one possibility. Another possibility may be that the Brazil, Brazilian uh, uh, regulatory establishment and landscape is somewhat more um, rapid in its responses to requests. The other other point, and this is really the last point that before in today's discussion, because you know we would tap you again and again on the other discussions as well. But the last discussion coming out of the vaccine trials that we are talking about the hospitals, it's also interesting that because of the NHS hospitals in in England in the United Kingdom they have been able to conduct much larger drug trials and uh, what other, other places have been able to. And that's primarily because the public health system is still there in England. The, 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 you have the NHS in England, 
and you don't have similar things for instance in india a large number of hospitals working under the same agency or in the united states which are the two other places where you could have you could have seen a large number of patients but the hospitals are completely fragmented unlike the unlike the case of uk that's absolutely true um, uh, in 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 terms of sheer magnitude yes you are absolutely correct even though i can imagine a, a very large number of uh, um, as they are called insurance system hospital chains in the us um, being being quite able to undertake uh, drug trials of this kind the fact remains that the nhs in the united kingdom is as you say an absolutely stellar example of how a true public sector public health system can even in the midst of great existential difficulties let's make no uh, bones about that still work together and effectively to conduct not simply patient care uh, duties but also these kinds of pressing research undertakings such as um, drug and other therapeutic trials and it's also interesting that the results from this have been more conclusive because of the sheer numbers as you talked about oh, yeah. and recovery trials have actually done certain things identifying dexamethasone uh, talking about hydrochloroquine and it's not being effective and also remdesivir all of these seem to show that they have an ability which others do not seem to show and even who which has been talking about its solidarity trial solidarity trials has yet to get off the ground uh, or you know at least the numbers are relatively much smaller even well, the, the scale of the solidarity effort is is somewhat different and therefore i can imagine that the difficulties are larger but 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 let me bring this point that you raise back Uh, at the end to the uh, bharat biotech icmr vaccine that we began conversation with uh, because in this context too it's interesting that the dozen or so um, hospitals that the director general icmr has apparently written to who are the participants in the clinical trial range over an extraordinary variety of uh, medical centers there are apparently apparently there are private hospitals there are apparently there there are um, uh, quasi complementary medicine ayurvedic centers there's there's a whole diversity across the country of uh, centers which have been pulled together to undertake such a vaccine trial and one wonders on what basis were these selected who selected them how well are they going to be able to work together are all of them on the same page in terms of experience as well as in terms of institutional mechanisms and structures to do clinical trials of vaccines of this kind all of these become issues and this in a country where we have one of the world's largest ostensible public health system that's quite true that this this should have seen public health systems more closely involved because the, hopefully there would have been a standardization and a minimum level of competence and we do not know some of the ayurvedic centers you have talked about but that they were involved with the corneal trials of uh, ramdev patanjali so we don't know of course we hope not but uh, that's a question that still uh, can perhaps be explored but you're right that after all ayurveda does not accept double blind trials randomized trials any day so well for the ability to conduct i them, don't even want to get uh, at this point into the issue of evidence based medicine and what it encompasses and what it does not all i'm trying to say at this point is in a country of 125 crore people with the world's so called largest public health network we cannot find 
a dozen reputable public sector institutions of high credibility to carry out clinical trials for a pressing need vaccine that's the big that says something deeply distressing about the state of our both public health uh, system and about our biomedical research systems well on the rather somber note and for my side a question mark on the sanity of the person who signed the letter uh, or drafted the letter uh, we will conclude our today's discussion i hope that icmr at least will do some clinical trials about the sanity of its officials before it proceeds further on doing clinical trials about the vaccine thank you very much satyeet for being with us and with my rather inflammatory remarks on your pro fellow professionals in medical research thank you this is all the time we have for news click today do, do keep watching news click and follow our other interviews as well